Some years ago, a little girl named Anne loved hearing her father tell stories about the early days when he was a boy in Salem, the Piedmont community that eventually would become Forsyth County's Old Salem. One of his tales was about pumping the organ at home Moravian Church. Anne tucked that memory away until a chance encounter many years later with the old pumper organ, the Tannenberg which dominated the balcony of home church until 1910, when it was dismantled to make room for a new organ. And so I really did not think a great deal about it until, uh, in, the, in the meantime, until I became a trustee at Old Salem. And I immediately knew that I wanted to know more about the Tannenberg. And I think it was when the church realized that little boys had stomped the main large pipes almost flat. I think it was at that time that they approached Old Salem and said, do you have any place else that you can store this organ so that it isn't um, mutilated anymore? The one thing we were determined to do was restore the Tannenberg. Not knowing where it would go or how much it would cost to restore it or um, the ultimate outcome of it. After 88 years, the parts were hauled out of storage and partially assembled to inspire folks to help with the fundraising. That's when they discovered that they had something unique in the world, the last remaining two-manual organ by American organ builder David Tannenberg. The newly recognized historical value helped raise the money to hire renowned organ builders Taylor and Booty. Their task? to take all the pieces back to their Stanton, Virginia workshop for two years of restoration work. That's when they encountered a bit of a mystery. And we knew that a lot of the pipes were missing out of the organ. And we went to a number of churches and looked in their organs, wondering if they had used them. Finally, uh, we went to the attic of uh, one of the buildings here at Old Salem. We'd already been up there twice, and we went up with better flashlights. And there were five bundles of pipes. I think 144 pipes altogether. And in the end, out of 644 pipes in the instrument, only fewer than 20 are missing and had to be replaced. So it's almost entirely original. Eventually, it was decided that the restored Tannenberg would end up in Old Salem's spacious new visitor's center, which contains this lovely auditorium. So how then do we get from here to here? Watch the arms. Yeah, I'm gonna go. A little bit more? Okay. We know that David Tannenberg made all of these pipes and they all have their note names written on them. This D matches the D of David Tannenberg in the signatures that we have of his. You got it? It's as if he put his signature on, on each pipe. All right. Which are these now? These are the eight still. Yep. That's it? I'm going to tune them now. I set it down here. This thing's going to sweep one way or the other, and I'm just going to make it stand still in the middle. And that's yep. in tune. So. Yep. 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 What note's that? Uh, D sharp two. Okay, play it again. I don't know where it is. As an organist, I was most interested in the sounds that the organ was going to make once it was restored. And having been an organ builder for 15 years, I can say I've never heard anything like it. 
the sound of the organ is magical and completely unique. These are the original bellows from the Tannenberg organ and they were originally in the attic of the church up above the organ. And the wind went from these bellows, which are like forge bellows you'd find on the blacksmith. The wind comes through these trunks and in home church went down through the floor into the organ. And when the organ was first put in, you had to pump the organ when you were in the attic. You had to come up here and the organ was pumped by pushing down these levers, which fills the bellows with wind. This organ is different from many organs that we're used to hearing nowadays. Its voice is more muted and more mellow than a lot of organs that we hear. Um, it's softer, yet it's somehow, it's warm, it's joyful. It's just beautiful to hear. David Tannenberg was born in Germany and at a relatively young age, I believe about 21, he emigrated to the United States. He was trained as a cabinet maker, a joiner. So when he came to this country, he learned organ building here from a, a man who had been trained in Saxony. This organ being late in, in Tannenberg's uh, career represents the mature work of his uh, workshop. It's very carefully thought out, very methodically done. The mechanical parts work extremely well still. We didn't have to do very much to any of that to make it work again other than just repair the obvious broken things. This is a good place to see how the playing action of the organ works. This wind box of the wind chest is full of the air under pressure coming from the bellows. When a key of the keyboard is depressed, the air from inside the wind box can go into this channel. When the organist draws a stop on the, at the console, this whole slider wooden piece is slid sideways inside the wind chest and a set of holes in the slider line up with the wind chest and where the pipe is standing. And then if this valve is opened, the pipe sounds. An organ is a, a wonderful blend of architecture, music, mechanical engineering, cabinet making, and certainly up, and up through this time period, the organ would have been the most complex machine that, that people would have known about. It's almost like a moonshot sort of engineering today. The organ is described as a tracker organ or mechanical action organ. The mechanical connections are these wooden strips, very thin pieces of poplar that um, are connected to the keys in a pulling direction. The key lifts this tracker up and it goes down and under the floor and back into the uh, organ and opens up the valve that lets the air into the various pipes. I think when we all first saw all the parts laying on the floor, we weren't quite sure that it could ever be done. Seeing the organ all together, finally, is really a dream come true for all of us. That dream now stands gleaming in the Visitor Center Auditorium. Its graceful design and beautiful note provide continuing testimony to both the art and the science of this lovely instrument, created for worship by a renowned Moravian organ builder 200 years ago in what was then our state's back country. Having this organ 
in Salem in 1800, at the start of this new community, at the start of this new church, tells us that for the Moravians at that time, worship was of primary importance and music was an essential part of that worship. And now the sweet, sweet sound of the Tannenberg once again brings music to the ears of those who stop by Old Salem to hear.